Um, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That was a, a beautiful film you, you showed there. I'm afraid I can't compete with that. Um, my um, contribution won't be very marine, but it'll be more broadly strategic. So this is a bit of an intermezzo between your film and the serious touristic uh, contributions to, to follow. Um, my, uh, for, for me, uh, it's great to be <coughs> back into the Black Sea after 15 years of absence, which I will explain in a moment. Um, my current standpoint uh, at the Center for European Policy Studies in Brussels is <coughs> to be producing uh, three explanatory handbooks on the Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia association agreements and deep and comprehensive free trade areas, DCFTA, we say for short in English. Uh, these texts, the, the Ukrainian text is 2,000 pages long uh, of legal legalism, so it's completely unreadable. So we are producing a book to explain in English and in Ukrainian with partners in Kiev at the Institute for Economic uh, Analysis and Policy Consulting. Um, uh, and by the autumn of this year, we will be presenting this. And we hope to do some regional road shows uh, in uh, Ukraine, Kharkiv, Lviv, and hopefully in Odessa, if there is uh, interest. So I'm deeply into this uh, DCFTA business at the moment. But now, back uh, 15 years. Um, I was responsible for a project um, in 2001, 2002, on Europe's Black Sea Dimension, which published a book that is still freely downloadable at uh, my center's website. But <clears throat> this gave me the opportunity to reflect upon what strategically has happened since uh, then, over the last 15 years. And I think it is as well for us all to uh, take stock of that. Um, Number one was uh, Romania and Bulgaria acceded to the EU, so Black Sea became an EU uh, uh, region. Um, secondly, and now more recently, these three association agreements with Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia have been signed and entered into force uh, from the 1st of January for Ukraine. Um, and um, thirdly, the new Chinese dimension, uh, new Silk Road and all of that, uh, comes in from the East. And finally, most important and indeed tragically, uh, Russia has branded itself through its 2008 war in Georgia, 2014, 2015, and 2016 conflict. Um, in eastern Ukraine, and even with respect to Turkey, um, Russia-Turkish relations are at their most uh, tense and divisive level strategically. So what we see here overall is a huge development, um, strategic development in the sense of uh, wider European Black Sea uh, development, but for the time being, uh, tragically, minus Russia that has branded itself unfavorably, to use um, a polite expression, making effective cooperation almost uh, impossible or unacceptable. Now, that's the politics of it. What actually has changed to the operational policy agenda in this region since then? It is rather interesting. In our old study, we identified, we looked at the BSEC agenda, and I had the pleasure to visit uh, Mr. Christidis' headquarters there 15 years ago on the Bolsfrist. I know what a lovely place he has. Um, I would love to have an office in his place on the Bolsfrist. Yeah, so uh, we cut through this huge BSEC agenda covering almost everything and said what is really important. Number one, energy, oil and gas pipelines. Number two, electricity, energy, electricity ring. Number three, transport. Number four, environment, fisheries. <coughs> and then number five, the one I will come to at the end, 
uh, trade policy relations between these member states. Now, what has actually happened? Um, I mean, uh, oil and gas energy. Uh, Fifteen years ago, uh, the Bakut Liblisi Sehan pipeline was not actually really agreed yet, and the competition with the Russian um, Caucasus pipeline uh, route was still uh, un unresolved. But now, of course, that uh, huge pipeline is operational. Uh, for the gas pipelines 15 years ago, it wasn't even on the agenda. There weren't any. Um, uh, but then later, the Baku Tbilisi Ezurum uh, pipeline was opened. And now the Southern Corridor project uh, is under serious development. Even connections of that with Iran now become conceivable. And uh, meanwhile, the Blue Stream uh, proved to be a bluff. So now the, the electricity business. This is very interesting because uh, over there in Georgia, <coughs> there's huge hydroelectric capacity and potential. Um, uh, Turkey recently joined the synchronous grid connection scheme called ENSO. Um, and this opens up the prospect, of, uh, thinking several years ahead, of major electricity ring connections around the south um, of the Black Sea uh, with synchronous connections. Uh, transport. Well, Chinese new Silk Road proposals are there, and, and Georgia um, in particular um, positions itself in terms of road, rail, and port infrastructures to be a part of that, <clears throat> and then across to the western coast of the Black Sea. What do we see here? Well, this last half year, we've seen Russia um, basically stopping the cross-Russia transit route for Ukrainian exports to Kazakhstan uh, and into Central Asia. So. Uh, that, those, that blockage is kind of on and off politically, but it is now uh, demonstrably uh, at least an unstable and unpredictable route, which means that the alternative route through the Black Sea uh, and through the South Black Sea coast becomes a serious uh, issue, which begins to develop, and that can connect extremely well with uh, the Chinese um, uh, new Silk Road development. On the environment, I will say little, uh, uh, but um, it seems to me that both the fisheries and the ecological catastrophe of this near dead sea, uh, this hasn't moved very much over the last 15 years. And this, however, is the one set of policy issues that inescapably concerns all of the Black Sea uh, region, Russia included, even in the presence of political, serious political uh, obstacles. So here I, I hope that at least in these areas, uh, uh, BSEC may become increasingly effective. Now, on the trade area, this is very interesting because in our writings <coughs> in 2002, uh, the B we noticed the BSEC uh, papers, action programs, talked about a free trade area of the BSEC area. Uh, we said, well, look, that's crazy. That's con inconceivable because there ain't no competence. There isn't uh, a real participation in any such project. But let's see what has happened uh, since then. I mean, Romania and Bulgaria in the EU, Turkey is in the customs union, and now <coughs> Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia are in the EU effective free trade area um, with their DCFTAs. Georgia has a free trade agreement with Turkey, Moldova follows, and there's a question actually now for Ukraine as to whether Ukraine follows with uh, free trade with Turkey, which should be uh, the case. So um, all of that uh, really means that there's an intense new level 
of wider Black sea, wider Europe, Eastern Europe, Black Sea area economic integration that is uh, seriously underway. And this is a new story. I mean, Ukraine, the biggest part of this uh, story, uh, is only from the 1st of January of this year that the DCFTA becomes available. So. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of issues that are going to uh, arise there. So, my conclusions. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Peritsky from the European Parliament, is he, I don't know if he's still, is he here? Uh, I mean, he made a very interesting speech and I personally completely agree with him that all of these circumstances amount to a case for upgrade strategic rebranding of the European Union's Black Sea uh, relationship. The Black Sea Synergy Program <clears throat> has existed, but it has not up to date with all of these important developments that uh, I have been summarizing. So I think the time has come <coughs> for some operational upgrade and rebranding now, uh, Birinsky spoke of a European macro region. He spoke of a Black Sea Euro region. Uh, well, the, these are the questions of names. I, I don't really mind about that. Uh, but the central point is there is a case for uh, branded upgrading, strategic upgrading of this uh, wider European Black Sea area. How to do it uh, in terms of diplomatic and political organization? Um, I think one, um, I've discussed this with representatives of the Commission here, and they are aware of these issues. One, the easiest way ahead would be to take the Eastern Partnership uh, gathering of the six Eastern Partnership countries with the EU, which meet multilaterally all together, you could attach to those meetings um, a Black Sea agenda sessions, but uh, invite, uh, my suggestion, Turkey to join in, um, and in addition, uh, Mr. Christidis himself. Uh, so to bring in uh, the BSEC as observer of what the EU would be doing, which is really reversing um, the process um, or complementing the process where the EU is observing uh, BSEC, but BSEC is, of course, stymied by the Russian problem for the, the time being. Um, the alternative to that would be to say, hey, the EU and the three DSCFTA states, Ukraine, Georgia, and Moldova, uh, ought to meet together multilaterally to go through all of the numerous implementation issues for the DCFTAs that are sure to arise in the next uh, years. So I think for trade issues, there should in addition be um, an EU plus three DCFTAs plus Turkey, which is in the customs union, uh, to meet uh, together maybe in supplementary sessions alongside uh, the Eastern Partnership um, Black Sea agenda questions. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, sorry to interrupt you from the beautiful uh, touristic uh, business, which uh, I'm sure has a great future. But strategically speaking, I'm so impressed by really uh, what has happened in these last 15 years that deserve to be, if you like, ratified by some uh, new political initiative. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emerson, for your comprehensive presentation about the trade. You are definitely right that we have a lot of obstacles now. And uh, you're definitely right that we have to work uh, in common all together on promotion of the Black Sea uh, bus and branding. And I'm happy to say that uh, next week, uh, 20th and 21st uh, of June, the World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, is holding in Kyiv a uh, European conference on the destination branding and General Secretary of uh, UNWTO personally is coming to Ukraine with many European and uh, uh, international speakers for this. And uh, 
we have all we have representatives from uh, our neighbor countries as well here uh, on this conference and in terms of development of maritime uh, maritime business maritime tourism business uh, we have to think about the uh, general brand of Black Sea region because we have uh, competitors uh, and partners at the same time in the Mediterranean and the Baltic Sea and we have to think what we can do in terms of marketing of our Black Sea basin to develop this. Uh, for this uh, I would like to invite the next speaker Mrs. Maya Koshman who is the Director of International Cooperation Department in the Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine.